Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read S3 3130. They worked together by Anna Prokos. They worked together. Have you ever worked with a partner? The partners are people who work together to get something done. Working with other people can make a job easier and more fun. Many great events in history took teamwork. This book tells about three teams of partners. Each team worked together to reach its goal. Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay. Edmund Hillary was born in Auckland, New Zealand in 1919. When he was 16, he went on a school trip to the mountains. It was then that he became interested in mountain climbing. As he grew up, Edmund climbed many mountains in New Zealand and in many other places. Tenjing Norge was born in Nepal in 1914. Norge was an expert mountain climber from the Sherpa community. Uh, Sherpas are people who live in the foothills of the uh, Himalayan mountain range. Norgay climbed the many mountains that surrounded his home. And he often helped as a guide on climbing tracks. Edmund and Norgay had the same goal. They both wanted to reach the summit of Mount Everest, the world's tallest mountain. Separately, both men had climbed the mountain before but they had never reached the top. In 1953, Edmund and Norgay conquered the mountain together. Mount Everest is in the Himalayan mountain range. The climbing of Mount Everest was extremely dangerous. Teamwork helped both men remain safe during their journey. At one point, Edmund jumped across a gap in the ice and landed heavily. A huge block of ice broke away. The ice went tumbling down the mountain. Edmund fell off the edge. Norgay held on to the rope that was tied to Edmund's waist. He held on with all his might. If he, had, if he hadn't done so, Edmund would have been lost forever. Edmund and Norgay climbed the mountain for seven weeks. On May 29th, 1953, they reached the summit. They were the first people to reach the mountain's peak. After the successful climb, people often asked the man which one of them had reached the summit first. We climbed as a team, they always answered. For years after their climb, Edmund and Norgay continued to work together. They spent time helping the Sherpas build the schools and hospitals in Nepal. Both Edmund and Norgay wanted to give something back to the people who had helped them achieve their goal. Children welcomed Edmund at Sotang School, Nepal. Norgay and Edmund received the medals after their climb. Helen Keller and Anne Sullivan. Sullivan. Helen Keller was born in Tuscumbia, Alabama in the United States in 1880. When she was just 19 months old, she became sick with a serious illness. The illness caused her to become blind and deaf. It was difficult for Helen to communicate with others because she could not see or hear. She became frustrated and often misbehaved, however. Helen's parents wanted to help her as much as they could when Helen was six years old, her mother heard about Anne Sullivan and attended the Perkins Institution for the Blind. The head of the school asked Anne to be Helen Keller's teacher. Anne had never been a teacher before. Still, she wanted to work with Helen. So she became Helen's teacher the year after she graduated and knew what it was like to be blind. She had lost most of her eyesight when she was a child. And showed Helen how to use her hands to communicate. Helen learned to use sign language 
because Helen couldn't see, Anne had to sign letters in the palm of Helen's hand. So Helen was signing herself. With Anne's help, Helen also learned to read and write. At first, Helen used raised letters and let, uh, later she learned braille. Helen even learned to speak eventually. Helen went to school with Helen. Helen went to school with Helen. El Anne listened to the teacher, then she spelled what they were saying into Helen's hand. Helen finished university when she was 24 years old. Braille. People who can see can learn to read Braille. In Braille, bumps on paper stand for letters. People use their fingertips to read the Braille. At university, Helen began to write a book about her life. She called it The Story of My Life. Helen wrote many books over the years. Helen and Anne helped other people too and showed others how to teach blind and deaf people. Helen let blind people know that they too could achieve their goals. As a team, they helped raise money for the blind and Sullivan and Helen Keller became role models for blind and deaf people. They were also admired by others. Their lives and their work touched many people. Children crowd around Helen during a visit to a Melbourne, Australia in 1948. Meriwether Lewis, William Clark, and Zachary Joya. In 1803, people in the United States had not explored much of the land in the far western part of North America. At this time, the United States only extended as far as the Rocky Mountains. People knew the Pacific was Pacific Ocean was somewhere further west, but there was no route to get there. Meriwether Lewis and William Clark journeyed west toward the Pacific Ocean. President Thomas Jefferson asked a former army captain, Meriwether Lewis, to lead a trip to explore the west. Meriwether knew many things about plants and animals. Meriwether asked William Clark to be his partner. William was a wonderful map maker, but the job ahead of them was difficult. Neither man knew the land or the Native Americans who lived there. Meriwether and L. William needed help on their journey. They were lucky to find the young Native American woman and her family, including her baby son. Her name was Sekajowia. She knew about the land and was able to communicate with Native Americans along the way. Sekajowia, about 1786-1812. Sekajowia, who was only about 16 years old, led the team across mountains. She found plants to eat. When they ran out of food, she talked with the Native Americans they met along the way. Sekajovia also helped obtain horses and food when the team needed them. Sekajovia was all smart and brave. Once her boat almost tipped over, she quickly saved important papers and supplies that would have been lost. Sekajovia saved Meriwether and William from trouble many times. To thank Sekajovia for her help, William and Meriwether named the river Sekajowia River. Meriwether, William, and Sekajowia worked together to help the group travel across thousands of kilometers. Meriwether and William took notes and made drawings and maps. They crossed many rivers and mountains. It was a long, difficult journey. Meriwether was once chased by a bear. When, the long, when their long trip ended in 1806, the partners never forgot each other. After Sarka Joya died, William took care of her son, Jean Baptiste. Meriwether, William, and Sarka Joya played an important part in the history of the United States and each other's lives. This memorial to Meriwether, William, and Sarka Joya 
is in the state of Montana, USA. After war, working together is not always easy. Edmund Hillary and Tenjing Norgay had to push each other to keep going. Ellen Keller and Anne Sullivan needed, a pa needed patience with one another. Mary the Lewis, William Clark, and Sekha Joya faced the challenges of exploring the unknown. What did these partners have in, co have in common? They never gave up. Partners work hard to reach their goals together. The end.